Christ our Lord, good morning. morning. And welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church of Salisbury on this wonderful, beautiful Sabbath day. We are celebrating the glow of Christ's resurrection love uh, as we are Easter people celebrating God's love in worship. I hope you had a chance, if you were here in person, to receive a printed copy of the worship guide and also a printed copy of the April Ecclesia. And if you're worshiping with us via online, you can click on the church's website, not only to let us know that you're here, but you can uh, find this online as well and read about so many things happening in the life of the church. Uh, Great articles and wonderful photos as well, Um, ways for us to engage together as the body of Christ. A few things I wanna be sure to mention. Uh, Our church's scholarship committee is receiving scholarship applications from high school seniors and uh, they need to find the application online on the church's website, fill it in um, immediately, send it into the church office. Interviews will be held on April the 18th. Also, um, we're excited about uh, our church's way to offer uh, kindness, love, and hospitality at uh, the soup kitchen at Rowan Helping Ministries. I just got word right before the service that it's our church's turn again to serve a Thursday evening, Friday morning. If you're able to be a part of that, uh, please contact Taffy Jordan and she'll get you all the information you need to know so that you can be a part of that at Rowan Helping Ministries this week. Another big announcement I'm really excited about, Church Street Market is coming soon. Uh, This is a new ministry of the church. Uh, starting May the 15th, Wednesday evenings, 4 to 8, right here on the church lawn. Our church will be hosting a farmer's market for the community. This is going to be a a terrific way for us to uh, offer hospitality, uh, to provide connections and community building. Uh, It's going to be a wonderful thing. You'll hear me talk more about this in the weeks to come, but I just want you to know about it and be excited about it as well. This upcoming Tuesday, April the 9th at 7 p.m., there will be a special interest meeting for prospective vendors. If you know of someone who's a gardener or, or is a vendor at other farmers markets, invite that person to come and be a part of that meeting this upcoming Tuesday, April the 9th. Upcoming this next weekend, I know that some people from our church are going to be at a a special beach retreat weekend, and that will be great, and you go with our blessing. Uh, We pray for your safekeeping and your good health and your spiritual growth. But also next week on Sunday the 14th is our annual Legacy Luncheon. This is a a wonderful chance for us to celebrate our, our church's mature, wise members, and we give thanks for all of you. Uh, It will be a terrific time together. If you haven't yet RSVP'd, uh, you can contact Mary Heather Steinman, and she'll make sure that you're on the list. Mary Heather, thank you for your work to coordinate this. Let us join together in worship.
As you're able, let us stand together for our call to worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let us worship the word of God. Christ our Savior destroyed the dominion of death. Let us join the archangels who praise the resurrection. The angel proclaimed, Come, see the place where he lay. He is risen, as he said, for he is almighty. We By his cross, he destroyed the curse of the tree. By his, burial, he never dead. By his rising, he began the new creation. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the guards of hell saw him, they were afraid, for he demolished the gates and smashed the iron chains. He has led us to Christ, Come, let us worship in the house of the Lord. Let us sing the hymn of salvation, for the one who was crucified is risen from the dead. Alleluia, 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 amen. I've been going through some Easter candy this past week. How about you? No? Oh, well then, you've come to the right place. Um, do, you, do you want some jelly beans? Do you want some jelly beans? No. Well, this has tanked real quickly. So, I like jelly beans. I like to eat one, I like to eat two, I like to eat ten. Too many. So how about you with candy? Do you ever eat too much? Not really an issue for you, is it? How about for you? Do you eat too, too much candy sometimes? No, no. You, you already ate one and that was enough, right? Yeah, that's good. Well, I've, I'm just going to put this candy away. You know, I've learned, I've learned that sometimes... If we have one thing that's good, that's good, and it could even be great, but sometimes if we have too much, that's not good. Too much of a good thing can become bad, like too much candy. So I just want you to think about that with me, okay? And I want us to be thankful for what we do have, and we don't have to get too much. Do you agree? I figured you would. Okay, well, let's pray. God, we're so thankful for all that you have given to us, and we ask that you help us to enjoy what we have and not try to get too much. 
because you bless us every day, even in ways we don't even see. So we ask for your blessing upon these children, their families, and all the ways that you help us to grow in your love. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I'll see you later. The Lord be with you, and also with you. God of life, your Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Your Spirit inspired the prophets and writers of Holy Scripture. Your Spirit draws us to Christ and helps us acknowledge Him as Lord. We ask that you will send your Spirit anew to revive us and give us deeper insight, encouragement, faith, and hope through the proclamation of your Easter gospel. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Hear now these words from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 through 33. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither soar, sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we have, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Please join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto, unto you, O Lord. Amen. About 10 years ago, I had to go gluten-free for health reasons. And it really wasn't that hard to do, except there were two things that I really, really missed. One was my mother's homemade chocolate chip cookies, especially right out of the oven with the melted chocolate. I missed those dearly. The other was, was Oreos. I loved Oreos. Well, about four or five years ago, I was grocery shopping, and as I was going down the cookie aisle, I looked over, and like a shining light from the sky, or from the aisle, I saw these gluten-free Oreos. I was so excited. I immediately checked out and ran to my car, packed up my groceries, and pulled out a container much like this one. I peeled it open, and I took my first bite, and it was amazing. And then I grabbed another cookie while I was sitting there, and it was so good that I grabbed a third cookie. <laughs> and then I said to myself, okay, show some restraint. And I put it down beside me, and I started my car, and I started driving. And then I got to a stoplight. <laughs> And I reached over and I grabbed another cookie. And I might have grabbed, an, grabbed another cookie while at that stoplight. I was so excited to eat these cookies again after five years that I'm ashamed to say I think I went through this entire container by myself in three days. I had lost total control of myself. While the cookies tasted amazing at the moment, I immediately felt awful. I was ashamed of myself. How had I lost so much control? I would love to say that that is the last time that that has ever happened to me, but it's not. <laughs> Stories like this are often passed off as funny or typical. Most of us can relate in some way, some form or fashion to eating too much of something. Most of the time, we just shrug it off. Many people in our country don't even recognize gluttony as a deadly sin because it has become so much a part of our culture. It is so commonplace now that we hardly even recognize it. Think about the supersized fries, the large drinks at the gas station, the giant buckets of popcorn at the movie theater that have free refills and the huge plate portions that are served at every meal. We essentially commit gluttony at every meal, and we're not even aware of it. 
Gluttony is defined as the overconsumption of something. Biblically, it is often referred to food and drink, but it can also refer to other things. What about our cell phones and electronics? What about our Netflix binges? What about our sports teams that become the most important things in our lives and consume our every thought? As this sermon continues, I invite you to think about all the things we, as a culture, overconsume. While doing this, I invite you to reflect on your life and what you might have gluttonous tendencies toward. This is not an invitation to judge others now or after this service, but to reflect within. Gluttony occurs when the balance of the means to meet the ends is off track. We eat to nourish our bodies. When we begin eating or drinking more than what our body needs, the balance of the means to meet the ends is off track. Instead of nourishing our bodies, we begin eating and drinking for our own pleasure. We begin to desire our own personal pleasure over our well-being. I want to make a note here that is very important. It is not wrong to take pleasure in eating when you are eating to nourish your body. There is a balance of the means and the ends. But when you eat in excess to fulfill a desire for pleasure, it becomes gluttony. Why is this important? What is wrong with eating and drinking to fulfill a desire for pleasure? Let's look at our scripture for today. In Matthew 6, 24, Jesus tells us, as part of the Sermon on the Mount, that we cannot serve two masters. This is reminiscent of Joshua 24, 15. Choose this day whom you will serve. If you love God with your whole life, your whole body, and your whole soul, as the greatest commandment instructs, your loyalty cannot be divided. What the world tells us and what God tells us are two very different things. The world tells us to go after our desires in abundance. The more we have, the better. You deserve that cake. You deserve that drink. We don't think much about it, but gluttony is insidious. It starts off small, and then it grows into something that controls us, something that can destroy us. In Luke chapter 21, Jesus warns against this very thing when he talks to his disciples about the future destruction of the temple and the end of days. He says, be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. We understand this concept well when the excess becomes too overwhelming to ignore. The person who has been diagnosed with diabetes is suffering. The alcoholic who has become violent or starts missing work. The drug addict who is never clean during the day anymore. But these extreme forms of gluttony are not the only forms of gluttony in our society. Any time the balance of the means to meet the ends is off track, gluttony has occurred. In the United States, poor diet was once associated with undernutrition. Today, it is most often associated with excess, particularly excess in calories, saturated fats, trans fats, added sugars, and sodium. This has led to high rates of obesity, overweight, and diet-related chronic diseases, including cardiovascular disease, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, and certain types of cancer. Just to give you an idea of one of these categories, most people are consuming two to five times more sugar than the daily recommended intake. I don't even want to imagine the daily recommended dosage I went over with this bag of Oreos. Most people are, cons um, and looking at alcohol, alcohol is the leading cause of morbidity and mortality, contributing to five million emergency room visits a year. 
Alcohol is a carcinogen associated with many forms of cancer, and the risk of breast cancer in particular rises with less than one drink a day. The whole body is impacted by alcohol use, not just the liver, but also the brain, gut, pancreas, lungs, cardiovascular system, immune system, and more. There is no perfectly safe level of alcohol consumption, as such current research points to health risks, including cancer and cardiovascular risks, even at low levels of consumption, regardless of the beverage. As we can see, excess in any amount, even just by a little a day, can hurt our bodies. When you consider the havoc overconsumption of food, drink, and alcohol cause, our scripture reading from Philippians becomes easy to understand. Paul writes, And now I tell you, even with tears, their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. Spiritually, gluttony quietly takes over our willpower and interrupts the disciplines that keep us connected to God. We each have a relationship with God, and any good relationship requires time spent together. When we are in prayer, serving those in need, reading scripture, in Christian fellowship with one another, and even sitting quietly in God's presence, we are building that relationship and our trust in God's promises. When we reach for something easy and self-gratifying instead, we are pulling away from God, we are choosing something else. Martin Luther said, anything on which your heart relies and depends, I say that is really your God. Instead of looking to God for healing and satisfaction, we are looking to earthly things, easier things. And because these earthly things can never satisfy us, can never give us lasting comfort, peace, joy, and happiness, we keep reaching for more. Furthermore, when we look for joy and glory in the pursuit of our own self-interest, Paul says our glory becomes our shame. In 1 Corinthians, he states, Whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. When we begin to fixate on what we individually want and need, we forget that we are part of a whole body. We were created to be connected, to look out for one another, to love one another. We were not created to be a slave to our own self-interests. It is clear what the Bible instructs and what our bodies and souls need are in line with each other. So why do we continue to be gluttonous? Maybe the answer can be found when looking at the ex excessive consumption of our phones. The average person checks their phone 80 times a day. That is every 12 minutes. And the reason why, well, more than one-third teenage users say they feel lost, angry, and anxious without their phones with them. I imagine the adult response is close to the same. When we feel lost, scared, angry, alone, or frustrated, we look for something to heal our pain we look for an escape. But do we really escape when we turn to these things? Or does the escape make the initial problem worse, becoming an insidious cycle that leaves us a prisoner? For some of us, it's not feelings of being lost, scared, angry, or alone. For some of us, it's simply because it feels good and we can. We crave the feel-good dopamine hit the brain releases when we interact with our phones or anything that provides immediate pleasure. We want instant gratification. But does instant pleasure truly satisfy us, or does it just leave us wanting more? Now, I know up to now, this all seems like pretty awful news. And in during my sermon prep, I came across a commentary where a minister said he avoided preaching about gluttony for 25 years. 
stating it was not exactly a crowd favorite. <laughs> it makes everyone uncomfortable, and I guess that means I'm getting a head start as this is my fifth sermon and I'm not even ordained yet. <laughs> On a serious note, though, I have good news. In light of Easter, there is good news. Last week, we celebrated the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In his death and resurrection, two things happen for us that are very good news when it comes to sins like gluttony. The first is, we are forgiven. Last week, I had a professor comment that we have worship on Sundays instead of Saturdays because Jesus rose on Sunday. Our week begins with the promise of new life. Last Sunday, Pastor Mark commented that we are Easter people because every day is a new day. The cycle of shame that leads us to feel like we are not good enough, not capable enough, not deserving enough for a new start is gone. We are washed clean. We no longer have to live in the guilt of our sins. Every minute you are alive is a new opportunity to start fresh. Nothing in your past can hold you down or keep you away from God's love. The second good thing is that God chose our bodies to be the temple in which the Holy Spirit dwells. In 1 Corinthians, Paul writes, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. What does this mean? It means we are never alone, and we are capable of great things through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 5, Paul warns against selfish ambition and acts of gluttony, saying instead that we should be in step with the Holy Spirit, who dwells within us. He states the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and what will really come in handy with gluttony, self-control. These all dwell inside of us. We have access to them, but we have to choose them because God gives us free will. God never coerces or forces us. God always extends the invitation by God's grace. We are the ones who must accept. We accept by spending time in the very disciplines that gluttony pulls us away from. There is a choice to make. We cannot serve two masters. When we are seeking for more in life, will we reach for the bag of Oreos, or will we get on our knees and pray to the only one who can provide everlasting grace, love, peace, and joy? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In response to God's word faithfully read and proclaimed, let us stand together and join in affirming our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, 
who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us humbly confess our sin before Almighty God and one another. Almighty God, our Father, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways of sin that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power, to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of life abundant given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Please stand. People of God, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a man. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Alleluia, thanks be to God, amen. The peace of the risen Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. Please turn to your neighbor beside you, in front of you, behind you, and let us share with one another the peace of Christ. Please be seated. It's always a blessing to present our offerings to God, and this morning we're grateful to Missy Brown for offering her gift of music to help us to worship together. And I invite at this time the ushers to come forward so that we may give our tithes and our offerings.
with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. On the night in which our Lord Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and after blessing it said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the bread and he also took the cup. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take and drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from this cup in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with your offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We have communion elements that are allergen-free, and we will have two stations in the front of the chancel. Uh, you are invited to come forward to receive God's gifts. As you do, uh, you can take the bread and touch it gently to the juice and partake. And this is a time of prayer as we remember the needs of our congregation, the needs of our community. I ask that you continue to pray for the family of Shuley's story as they mourn her loss, for the family of Jim Petit as the family mourns his loss. Also, continue to be in prayer for Larry Crowell, who has been hospitalized and is in need of our congregation's care. Also, for Jim Ogle, who will have a procedure this upcoming week. We will be singing songs of faith. You'll find the uh, hymn numbers printed in your worship guide uh, as we join together in worship, as we partake of the Lord's table. The table is prepared. You may be seated.
Let us stand and join together now in the post-communion prayer. God of salvation, you have spread a table before us and nourished us at the Feast of the Lamb. You have restored us to life and brought us back again into your love by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue to heal us so that we may proclaim to all the world your triumphant love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Love God, love yourself, and love one another as God commands. 